Chris, Bob, and Tony here. How are you, sir? Hi, Chris. Uh, good evening, fellas. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing and, well, uh, you know, Much uh, better since you've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, Tony. <laughs> Chris, we just talked to Wendell Davis. Uh, he sends his regards. Very uh, nice man. You and I Very talked nice to him just man. the other night. What a guy, huh? He's awesome, man. He's awesome. Yeah, you know, Wend Wendell's one of the good guys out there. You know, we, uh, we always have so much fun when he joins us on the show because you can hear the enthusiasm sort of coming through his voice, mm -hmm. you know, kind of that smile through the phone sort of thing. And yeah. Wendell's always so much fun to have. And not only does he have great stories, you know, from his, you know, time at LSU being a Hall of Famer there and with yeah. the Bears, but, you know, the things that he's doing now, you know, post his career and the, and the football software that, you know, absolutely every coach is going to need to have as, uh, as part of their repertoire. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, what, what, one of the really good guys that we've had the uh, absolute privilege, Bob, to have on the show multiple and, times. And uh, when, when Chris is talking about us, it's that we, uh, we co-host Thursday Night Tailgate. Uh, I'm honored to be Chris's co-host on that show. Again, this is Thursday night, uh, 8 to 10 p.m. on the uh, Armed Forces Radio Network, also on Blog Talk Radio, also on a bunch of other stuff that Chris is more familiar with than me. You can hear it a lot, a lot of places, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. 8 to 10, we get like five guests every week. Guys like uh, we've had on the show, Tony, yeah, you get a lot, a lot of the of same. Fun. You get Tim Worley and Darnell Dinkins we've mm. spoken to, and uh, we, uh, we just have such a blast on that show. And again, uh, we also, Chris, myself and Dave Radigan uh, also do View from the Lone Red Seat on Blog Talk Radio. That was a, every Tuesday night during baseball season. Uh, maybe not as much fun as Thursday Night Tailgate has been this year <laughs> my, so far. My heart goes out to you guys but, this um, year. That, I it was good anywhere. <laughs> that's, in the, uh, that's in the Tuesday night time slot 7 to 8 during baseball season. You can catch that if you're a big Red Sox fan. Uh, We'll be back next year. Probably do a hot stove uh, show. And uh, Chris also does a weekend show, a golf show next on the tee. So as you can see, he's uh, incredibly, incredibly busy uh, as uh, as expected. But uh, Chris, just to remind us, this is his second appearance on MNST. All, all, just remind us, Chris, maybe some of your early sports influences. We like to get all our guests uh, view on that teams you followed as a kid, maybe players you looked up to uh, many moons ago, my friend. Yeah, so you know, growing up being a, a kid from Pittsburgh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I believe black and gold, uh, you know, down to the bone. So when you think about, you know, when I think about growing up, who are, who are my sports idols? Well, you know, Willie Stargell was a huge hero of mine. Had the opportunity to meet pops uh, a few times, but yeah, he was. He was an early idol, and you know, as a as a huge Steeler fan, that you you guys both know that I am. You know, Jack Lambert was always somebody that uh, I love to watch. I'm I'm more of a defensive guy than an offensive guy, uh, so you know, a lot of those guys on the on the defensive side of the ball were guys that I uh, I grew up idolizing. Like you know, on top of you know Jack Lambert, you know, I'm, I'm a linebacker guy. I loved in the '90s, you know, Greg Lloyd, Kevin Green, uh, Chad Brown, who Bob, you know, we've had on uh, yeah. TNT with us on a on a number of occasions, you know, Rocky Blyer, a guy that we've uh, just spoke to a couple of weeks ago on our Hall of Fame edition. Of Fame. So those, those were the guys, you know, from a football perspective, they could say Stargell on, you know, from the Pirates, uh, you know, being a Red Sox fan as well, you know, guys like, uh, you know, Yaz uh, have, a, have a, uh, a special place in my heart. And a guy that I think, Bob, that, you you go way back that uh, that uh, we always wonder what might have been with Tony Canigliaro. So oh, those, those sure. are the guys that I grew up rooting for. Yeah, we uh, my goodness, Tony and I have talked about him and, and guys like Steve Busby and uh, yeah, oh, but Tony yeah. C uh, he could have been as good as anybody. But um, speaking of the Red Sox, I mean, you know. Uh, just a few years ago, Chris, yourself, Dave Radigan, and myself were chosen to host that Red Sox show when um, Mike Lynch was putting uh, together the Seamheads uh, Network, Tony. And, uh, you know, it's been so much fun, but, um, you know, uh, it, but you've gone on to do so many incredible, great things since then, Chris. But when did the sports casting bug truly hit you? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, you, know, you, you talked about, you know, Mike Lynch and the, and the Seamheads opportunity. You know, that was, you know, that, Broadcasting is something that, uh, you know, I've always, you know, sort of had a, a fantasy that I would do one day, and it's sort of been in my blood, and I've, you know, I've wanted to do it, but how do you get involved with it? And it's something that I got involved with later in life. You know, we've been doing The View from the Lone Red Sea. Now, this was, I think, our, our third complete season doing it, and, 
it's just sort of something that I stumbled upon, Bob. You know, I mean, yeah. Mike uh, put out there the opportunity to do something, you know, from a, just from a writing standpoint. He, I saw his, uh, his uh, you know, ad, if you will, in, in LinkedIn or on LinkedIn and, you know, looking for guys that can be a contributor to Seamhead. So I, I raised my hand and uh, started talking to Mike, and then all of a sudden the opportunity to, to do a podcast came up and, you know, was, was uh, blessed to have the opportunity to do it with you and Dave, and you know, at the end of that first baseball season, I said, you know, well, is anyone going to do anything with football? And then uh, uh, there wasn't much interest in that, but all of a sudden, Joe Williams stepped up, one of the guys within the Steamheads organization, said, yeah, all right, let's do a football show, and and uh, had the opportunity to, uh, you know, my, my uh, first partner on that show was was Angelo Kane, and you know, Angie and I have been uh, the best of, best of friends for many many years, and we thought, well, you know what, every every Monday morning. He and I would talk, you know, uh, you know, sort of Monday morning, you know, quarterback. Mm-hmm. So, you know, wonder, wonder if we could do a show. And we thought, well, let's give it a shot. And you know, we, we started Thursday night tailgate and got very lucky to, you know, have LeVon Kirkland, you know, being a Steeler fan. Got lucky to have LeVon Kirkland be our first guest and, and uh, Rocky Blyer to come on and be our second guest. And as you know, we just celebrated our three-year anniversary of that show. Uh, so, you know, what started out is, you know, a, a one-hour show with one guest with two jamokes like Ange and I, you know, you know, talking, you know, football, all of a sudden, you know, very quickly became a 90-minute a show with three guests, and then it became a two-hour show with five guests. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here we are three years later uh, celebrating an anniversary and uh, being, you know, very blessed to now be official partners of uh, the NFL Alumni Association. And, and Mike Ditka, you know, the official radio show of Mike Ditka and Jerry Kramer's organization, the Gridiron Greats. And like you say, we're, we are on uh, radio stations across the Internet. Uh, so it's, it's been a wonderful journey. It sure has. And, uh, again, uh, it, the honor is mine, Chris. I mean, it's amazing how life works, Tony, you know, through, a, through basically a Mike Lynch who wants to do a Red well, Sox show what, and things just kind of material? What did John Lennon say? Uh, wife is something that happens when you're making other plans. Yeah, you know. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, we become such good friends, Chris and I. And when we talk, it's weekly, and if if not daily, online. And uh, man, it's just uh, life is funny how that way. Tony, question. Yeah, you, you know, and Chris, as far as broadcasters or sports talk show hosts or sports personalities. Um, who, in your estimation, out of all the guys you may have listened to, and women through the years, uh, made the greatest impression upon you? Well, you know, I mean, through the years, you know, in my life, Tony, you know, when I, when I, first that I thought, like, that, that this might actually work out, right, that this might actually catch on and people might actually, you know, enjoy listening uh, to the shows that I'm on. You know, I, I try to watch Bob Costas because mm-hmm. I think he's the best in the business. Uh, try to understand and listen to, you know, the way he uh, conducts an interview and, and uh, the way he leads his guests and talks and, and that sort of thing. So he, he is, a, you know, someone that I try to learn from. Uh, Bill Hillgrove, who is, just happens to be the radio voice of, of the Steelers. Mm-hmm. When, when I first started, you know, Ange and I first started Thursday Night Tailgate, and uh, I asked Bill to come on the show and he was gracious enough to do it very early on. But he became a mentor of mine just to understand, you know, again, some, I guess someone that I could actually talk to that could mentor me along how to do an interview. And, and some of the things that he, you know, be, you know in, instilled in me uh, around, you know, making sure that, you know, yeah, you might put together your list of questions that you want to ask a guest. But, you know, the interview can turn on a dime. And you've got to be prepared to, you know, go wherever it leads. So, you know, don't ask one question. And that if the interview has gone a different direction, now you're going on to question number six. And you've lost sort of continuity because that wasn't where the interview was going. So let it go there and, and you know, make sure that you are actively listening to your guests. Because if you ask a question that, you know, and the interview has gone a different direction, now it appears like you weren't listening. So make sure you do that. That was something that, that he taught me. And, and you know, and, and I don't say this just because we're talking, you know, now on your show. But, you know, Bob has been a huge mentor to me. Tony, you know, I've learned an awful lot from watching you on Connecticut Mornings. Um, I, I try to, you know, make sure that, I, you know, I'm actively watching and listening and, and making sure that, uh, you know, I can pick up on, you know, some of the things that, you know, other people do that do it really well. And, 
And uh, you both are outstanding at, you know, Thank when you. you're talking to a guest, making them feel right at home and at ease and, and doing, the, you know, doing the interview. I think that's something that's very important. You know, an interview shouldn't be, you know, labor to your guest. You know, they should have a good time and, and you know, be able to go whichever direction they want. And uh, th that is something that, you know, between watching Costas, you know, listening to Bill Hillgrove, watching the two of you, that um, hopefully uh, I'm, you know, starting to, you know, be decent at. Well, ob obviously it were. And, you know, the, the thing that we come out of Thursday Night Tailgate each week, Tony, we, 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 we have a feeling that the guests had just as much fun as we did. And uh, that that's a great feeling. It um, is. You know, you, you, we hear so much about guys that can be tough interviews, et cetera. Well, and, and, you know, not to take away from Chris's airtime, but I remember, like, you know, Chris talks about his first interview, you know, with the Steelers player when, when you and I had Bob Segrin and I was shaking like a leaf yeah. and, like, we're looking at each other and, uh, Bob Seeger in the pole vaulter, and he's just talking like he's in the room with us. And I'm just saying to Bob, let him talk. Let the great ones play. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> don't, don't get in their way. You know, Sometimes you got, yeah. You know, you got to love those guys, yeah. Chris, that, that are talkers because, you know, you throw a question out. Uh, John D'Aquisto comes to mind. Yeah. You know, you, you throw maybe, you can prepare all day, Chris. You may get three questions in, but you had a heck of a half it's hour, like, you know, segment. It's man. almost like Green Acres. Nice day, Mr. Kimball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, also, I also should mention uh, Chris hosts, hosts another show uh, next on the T. Now, you know, he lives down in Georgia. That's a hotbed of golf. Yes. Uh, Chris has... Chris has been to Augusta, Tony, but uh, tell us a little more about that show, Chris. And, and did you always have an interest in golf? Um, you know, Bob, you know, my father played golf, you know, when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, around 12 years old, he, he took me to, uh, to get some, you know, take some lessons. And uh, it's something that, that I've enjoyed, you know, you know, ever since then. I say, you know, um, golf is a game that, you know, takes 10 years just to get bad at. <laughs> but um, you know, persevered through it, and and it's a guy, you know, it's a game that I really enjoy. Uh, you know, my buddies and I, you know, we go away every year on, on a, uh, you know, on a guys' golf trip. So, um, yeah, I love the game. It means a lot to me. It's been a lot to me, you know, since you know, since I was 12 years old. That show's been a lot of fun. I, you know, it's something that uh, just started earlier this year. I mean, we had uh, you know one uh, kind of a, a one episode only last year, uh, leading into the Masters. Uh, but this year, right before the Masters, had an opportunity through, you know, Armed Forces Radio had an interest in, uh, in my doing a golf show. So I picked that up. Uh, and it's, you know, to, to tell you how much fun I have doing that and how blessed I've been, you know, even on that side. I mean, you know, my first show this year, first show, you know, if you want to say it's now a, a thing, you know, Gary Player, Billy Casper, Peter Kessler, right out of the chute. Yeah. So, you know, that, uh, like I say, that's, that's, it's so much fun, you know, just to have the opportunity to speak to legends like that. I mean, Peter Kessler is the voice of golf. Yep. You know, Billy Casper is some, probably someone who is as underrated as a golfer as, as you can possibly be when you have over 50, you know, 50 wins and a couple of majors under your belt. And you, as you can imagine, talking to Gary Player and uh, having, you know, the opportunity to speak to actually Mr. Player two times now is, uh, is uh, absolutely, you know, a, a, a moment of a lifetime if you will, to get to speak to someone of that nature. And the guys that I've gotten to know, you know, through that show are absolutely outstanding. I mean, you know, Sean McKeel, the 2003 PGA champion, Bob Friend Jr. I'm sure you guys remember Bob Friend's father, the, the pitch for the Pirates. Yeah, very you know, well. Back in the 1960, you know, late 50s, early 60s, he you know, went on to play, pitch for the Mets for a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, Bob Friend Jr. is an outstanding individual. And, you know, Paul Stankowski and Bobby Clampett. I mean, I could go on and on. I, it's just an absolute honor to have, you know, the opportunity to, you know, take a half an hour of, the, you know, of uh, their lives and be able to speak to them. Yeah, and uh, those to, to recognize the talent they have. If you, if you see these guys hit balls live, it, it's just beyond it's, what yeah. we can. Uh, that's why it's tough for me to watch golf, Chris, or attend events because I just say, how do they do that? I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that, and I just watch, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's amazing how good they are. But I just want to get back to baseball. Now, you know, again, I was talk we were talking in the back before the show, Chris. You know, doing the Red Sox show, very tough to do a show. Uh, 2012, 2014. <laughs> you know, it's easy to talk about teams and have fun when teams are going well. 
but it probably, when, you, when we think back, and Chris and I are both optimists, Tony, it probably has made us better journalists, Tony, <laughs> having, when, the, when you think about it, when you undergo that kind of adversity, when things are bad, to, to still, uh, you know, come up and, and be up for a show every week during baseball season, that's tough to do. Well, you know, it makes me think about, in the early days of the Mets, Ralph Branca and Howard Cosell used to broadcast from Cosell's house. Okay. And Cosell's wife would have to wake them up to do the post game because they're getting beat like ten to nothing or something like that. So, like like every single night. Okay, guys, you got to do the post game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, but uh, if if things hold to. to uh, to the way they should be, Chris. You and I, you and I and Dave should have a good year in 2015. Uh, well, let's hope so anyway. But uh, about the Sox season in general, Chris, there's not much to say. 20 games under 500. We talked about it ad nauseum every week. Uh, just maybe what do you see happening in the postseason, or what do you think is the first address here? What, what should they? What's their first concern right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the I think the first thing they've got to go after Bob is is, is a couple of top of the uh, rotation pitchers. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, we look at you know the guys that they have and that they've been throwing out there. I mean, Joe Kelly was a nice pickup for the Red Sox, and I think he did a decent job. But he is he is nobody's you know number one or number two, you know coming out you know as a, as a starting pitcher. So. Um, I think that's where they've got to go first is address is address those and you know how ironic is it Bob that today you know you know John Lackey's getting a start for the Cardinals it's true you know for for all that he meant to the Sox last year and the, the angst that we suffered you know waiting for that season, but I think that's where they got to go first and then then I think you got to address third base. I mean you know we talked you know a week in and week out how disappointed we were with Mil, uh, Will Middlebrooks this year mm -hmm. and really since you know that rookie season where we had so much promise. You know, we thought this guy was going to be the third baseman, you know, for the next decade, and uh, it just hasn't worked out since. So I, I think those those are the spots they've got to go. And then, obviously, they got to decide who the closer is going to be. I don't know if, if uh, Koji Uehara has, uh, has come to the end of the line because he was so dominant last year, and he was dominant the first half of this year. But at that point, you know, the wheels fell off. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, Mejica, who – I know drove you nuts most of the season, ended up being, you know, the closer for the last month or so, and, you know, did a, did a nice job, but I don't know that he is the closer for 2015. So, you know, you got three, you know, three or four really big spots. You need a one and a two on your starting rotation. You've got to decide what you're going to do at third base, and then I think you've got to settle in on a closer. From there, I mean, there's still other questions that have to be answered, but I think those are the top four. It's a tough uh postseason for Sherrington, Tony. Oh, uh, sure. Man, he's got some work to do. You talk about a winter of discontent. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. We have uh, just a couple more minutes with Chris, Tony. Shoot. Uh, Chris, the wide world of sports. Head injuries, domestic violence, hazing, steroids, um, charitable funds abuse, things I can't speak about on a family um, television station. All of that being as it is, I see the NFL and I see MLB and man, they're just like dancing through the raindrops. Nothing ever really seems to happen. Uh, will we see change in our lifetime, do you think? I think you got to, Tony. I think, you know, to your point, and, you know, Bob and I, you know, as we communicate, particularly, you know, online on a, on a daily basis, I mean, it, for a while there, and I think we just really grew tired of it because I'm sure they're still out there every day, but every day was, a, you know, a different player or arrest or an issue going on particularly as we, you know, focus now in on the NFL, but it's just, you know, it's just constant. But I think, you know, I think the NFL has, has gotten such a black eye. And, you know, Major League Baseball suffered with it, you know, you know for, for over a decade, right, with the, with the steroids sure. issue and PEDs, whether it's H, whatever it was, steroids or HGH. Um, but I think, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I think it's going to get better. Um, I think, that, you know, there's too much of a spotlight on it right now. I think the you know when we talk about CTE and concussions, I think we've got you know too many you know former players and, and you know current players that have been in the league for you know seven eight nine years that have you know are having so many issues with brain you know brain injuries that I think it's definitely got to get addressed. And we talk about you know right now, I mean it seems like the NFL wants to address it, but you know by changing rules all the time to try to make it safer, which is great. Um, it's you know made it made the game a more you know offensive show more of a passing attack you know the sport right now, 
But I think what you're going to see is more and more things get addressed around the equipment. Uh, we've we've had a wonderful guest that we have been supporting for the three years we've been on the show on the football side, Shock Strip. You know, Doc uh, Doc Novicki is uh, you know got a, a wonderful product that you know we out you know Angelo and I for years, Bob and I for the last several you know for the last year several months have really been talking about you know boy you know why are they not addressing the equipment? Mm-hmm. I get that the rules need to make it better. And, you know, we're trying to, you know, get rid of the helmet-to-helmet shots and the blows to the head and, you know, better concussion uh, protocol for when players can get back into games. And all of those things are going to have a, you know, downstream effect on keeping players healthier. But, boy, why aren't you addressing the helmet? Why aren't you addressing, you know, the actual thing that where the blow is struck? And uh, I think you're going to see the NFL do something along those lines as well. But, um, you know, it's just an you know, overall theme of your question, Tony. I think I think sports is you know I think Major League Baseball has come a long way with what they have done to try to clean up the sport. I think you know as we all know, as you know as the as the tests get better, so do the masking agents. So there are mm-hmm. players, and we've seen players get suspended this year in Major League Baseball for PEDs. There's always going to be the guy that's going to try, and the scientist that's out there that is creating the you know whatever drug you need to create to hide it so that you don't test positive for it. That's always going to be out there. But I do think it's going to get, you know, fewer and fewer and fewer. And uh, on the on the football side, I think the tests and the protocols and the rules and eventually the equipment is going to change because if you don't, you know, parents are going to, you know, not, you know, not, uh, and that's becoming you know an football issue. at the yeah. little league level it has fewer participants. And people are going to, you know, you're going to have to see fewer and fewer parents allowing their children to play. So the NFL has got to, for the next generation of player, make sure that they are doing everything they can so that, you know, we have, you know, children still allowed to play this sport because if not, eventually it's going to dry up, but I think they'll get ahead of it. Yeah, and I um, just want to say, Tony, that Chris and I have made a concerted effort. I mean, there's so much negativity out there, but um, we've tried to uh, put a positive spin on that show. I mean, the, the, we want to put more focus on the good that players do because yeah. when you think about the whole pool of people, you know, it is a select bunch that we focus on. But, you know, when we talk to guys like Tim Worley, Reggie Kelly, mm-hmm. J.J. Burden, Eddie Kennison, you know, they've all come through the, the show, all great guys. Wendell Davis gentlemen. tonight. He's very, very nice. All man. gentlemen, and that's what Chris yeah. and I want to focus on and, and what – charitable things a lot of these guys mm-hmm. do that goes unnoticed because of guys like your Ray Rice's and et cetera. Right. So that's, and that's something that we've got to be uh, focused right. on. But uh, Chris, that's our time... That's exactly right. Our you time... Know, I think I, go ahead, buddy. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I just think, you know, there there are so many players doing good things that's that, right. you, know, you, know, in, you know, in the immortal words of Don Henley, we love dirty laundry, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what gets, you know, all the publicity, and that's where everyone's trying to make a name for themselves is by airing everybody's dirty laundry, you know, and, and, you know, kind of getting back to Bob's point. I mean, at some point we just got tired of all the, all the nastiness, all the, all the bad publicity, all the negativity. I mean, it's just sort of a huge stew of negativity out there that we really decided we want to go the opposite direction and really, you know, start to highlight, you know, the good things that these guys are doing in their communities. I mean, there's so many guys, not only in today's game, but the former players, that are doing good things in their communities. The Warwick Dunn's that, uh, you know, just, you know, just donated his 139th house yeah. to, you know, to single mothers. I mean, there's so many stories mm-hmm. like that, that uh, just, you know, they're on, they get on page 12 yeah. while the Ray That's Rice right. Ray you know, Rice dominates CNN one. headline news. Yeah. You know, we get, you know, it, it's enough of the negativity. Let's, let's, uh, let's find the positive things. And let's make sure we're ringing the bell just as loudly for those things. Yeah, we have to do that. Again, uh, there's so much you can go with ThursdayNightTailgate.com. For our viewers out there, go to that site, tell you more about us and the show. Uh, Twitter, you can go to at CT Mascaro, uh, at TNT Radio Tony. um, You'll get some things there. You can find Chris on Facebook. Uh, Remind our viewers, uh, Chris, who's coming on Thursday? You always send me the day of it, so... uh, (laughs) Tell me who's coming on Thursday again, my friend. We'll have a lot of fun, whoever it is. Absolutely. Uh, this Thursday night, we've got, you mentioned already, our friend Eddie Kennison oh, yeah. will be back with us. Uh, we've got uh, our friend Warren Moon, 
going to join us. Nice. And then, uh, you know, Terry Glenn always comes on to uh, give us his five-star picks of the week. And, boy, am I trailing, you know, in that thing. You guys both 5-0 this week. <laughs> Very impressive. I am, I am a Lazari Ivis. <laughs> and then um, Bob you know, the new league that's now the MXFL, which is the Fall Experimental League that yeah. uh, is going to be a developmental league for the NFL. We've got uh, our regular guest, John Bach, who is now the yeah. head coach of the Brooklyn uh, Bolts. And then uh, Mike Olick Jr. is going to be making his third appearance with us. He's also a member of That's the Brooklyn awesome. Bowl. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll talk then, buddy. We're out of time. And uh, I Great will talking uh, to you. take care. Uh, thanks, thanks for, Tony. Thanks for everything. And uh, you know uh, you're the best, my friend. Take care. Nah, no, you guys are the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> I Good appreciate night. it. Good talk night, soon, Chris. Fellas.